Hello everyone, um, I'm Rebecca Arnold and I teach dress history at the Court Audience Institute of Art in London. Um, I'm really pleased to be able to welcome so many people to our first event of this academic year and also to have the pleasure to introduce Nadia Wang to all of you. Um, Nadia did my MA course a few years ago and she's now undertaking a PhD with me um, looking at her world magazine in the 70s and 80s and considering the way it constructs idealized visions of Singaporean femininity. And Nadia is really an expert on Southeast Asian uh, femininity, fashion and identities and a really, really fascinating scholar. So I'm very pleased today that she is going to talk to us about the Indonesian designer um, Toton and to think about the ways in which his work expresses both local and global influences and how that is projected through his designs. The structure of the talk will be that um, Nadia will show you some lovely slides and talk to you. Um, and then we will switch to Olivia Smales, another wonderful dress historian who's in fact interested in jewelry and will take questions. So please drop questions into our, the chat at the side of your screen throughout the talk and at the end. And we will ask as many of those as we possibly can. So thank you so much for being here. And let's hand over now to Nadia. Hi, everyone. My name is Nadia. And thank you so much, Rebecca, for the lovely introduction. And thank you to the Research Forum for having me today. So I'm going to share my screen now. And I'm going to take you through Toton's work with Toton the Label. Just give me a moment here. Okay. So this is the title of my presentation. It's called Toton Janwar, Vision, Roots and Continuity. So I'm gonna talk about the vision that Toton has for his label, how he looks at his roots for inspiration and how he continually innovates through these sources of inspiration. So I'm just gonna take um, the excerpt from the website for this event. Um, that this session of addressing images will be based on a photograph taken of Toton Janwa's spring summer 2019 runway show during Jakarta Fashion Week. And I'll be discussing how contemporary Southeast Asian women's wear designers put together traditional and modern and local and global elements, not only in designing clothing, but also to create compelling fashion narratives and how this hybridity creates unique brand identities that appeal both to domestic and international consumers. So I'm sure you guys have been looking at this image um, when we were on the holding slide and it is absolutely beautiful. I think this is why I wanted to talk about Toton for this edition of Addressing Images. And I actually wanted to talk about this in May um, earlier this year, but because of the pandemic, we postponed the event because it. Uh, was supposed to be at the research forum itself as a physical event. But I'm really glad that all of you are joining me here tonight. Well, it's tonight here in Singapore and in the afternoon in London. Um, and I'm going to take you through his inspirations. So this is the agenda. I'm first going to talk about how Toton draws inspiration from Indonesia. Then I'm going to talk about how he dresses women, not only Indonesian women, which is why the Indonesia is in brackets. And I'm going to talk about how he effectively uses um, multi-platform communication methods and collaborations to stay relevant and fresh. So first of all, inspiration from Indonesia. Just give me a moment because I need to minimize my screen. I forgot that I can't see my notes if I can see my face at the same time. Okay. So I'm back. Okay, I hope you can still see my screen. Um, yes, I think so, because there is no chat about that. So this is something that I um, took out from Prestige Magazine, and it's Toton's words. Um, he talks about how he tries to manifest how he appreciates Indonesia. So from the get-go, he is very um, aware that he's an Indonesian fashion designer. And he sees that there's an abundance of textiles from across Indonesia so that um, you know, he really wants to make sure that he looks at that and he uses that and he contemporizes that. Because I think 
he's very aware that in Indonesia, we think about um, ethnic costumes, about how the outfits uh, are for special occasions and their specific textiles and how it can be worn. But surely there can be a contemporary take on it all. So for his very first collection, he used an embroidery technique from an area in East Java called Tasik Malaya. And he talks about this in an interview where he says, the people in Tasik Malaya are embroiders, uh, embroiderers, sorry, and the skill has been passed through generations. So what I really enjoy about Toton's work is that it is very considered and he always articulates his inspiration very well through interviews that he gives. Um, and he also always mentions how, that, how there are human touches to what he uh, uses and that makes every piece slightly different and unique. And I think this gives a special something to his clothes. And in fact, today I'm wearing um, a piece from this collection, but it is in, uh, it's all white. It's a version of what you see on the screen right now. So I want to relate this to what um, Rebecca has written about, um, that fashion thrives on novelty and change. And I think all of us understand this, that you know, that's what keeps each season or each fashion season exciting for everyone because there's something new, there's something um, exciting, there's something that we can focus our attention on and feel like, wow, you know, it's something that um, we can look at with fresh eyes. And so, Toton does this very well um, and really elegantly with what he sees as traditions in Indonesia. So um, for this particular collection, he talks about how he doesn't just look at the Tasik Malayan embroidery, but he also uses other forms of inspiration, like with the Mandarin collar, which you can see here um, on both images, and how that in turn reminded him of the spiky and studded choker worn by punk kids in the 1980s. So he thought, why not combine the construction of this Mandarin collar made with silk, lined with leather, and adorn it with rock crystals, stones, metal studs, and spikes. So it's really a contrast in textures. And then you have that artisanal element from Indonesia as well. So it is a very sophisticated blending, a very sophisticated hybrid of inspirations. For the next collection for fall winter 2013, he looked at another traditional fabric from Indonesia and this was the lyric. Um, so he talks about how it's widely used for traditional rituals and that the stripes have different meanings in Javanese culture. But I think a big reason for him picking this is that it has a geometric feel. So it really can translate into a modern look. And this is very interesting to me because he is looking at traditional um, cloth in Indonesia with fresh eyes and allowing his consumers, allowing the industry to also look at the same material with fresh eyes and think about how something that is considered very traditional can also feel or can also be really contemporary. So I'm reminded of this line from Liz Scott's writing uh, where she talks about dreams of small nations in a polycentric fashion world where designers search for inspiration outside the conventional field of fashion and avoid cultural stereotypes by making sure their version of the local was not obvious. So how does Toton do this? Coming back to the collection that is uh, the focus of my presentation, the Spring Summer 2019 collection, we can see that he created um, dresses that were decorated with tassels on his skirts, and these were inspired by traditional Papuan clothing. So Papua is the largest province in Indonesia. And I think, you know, the fact that he uses an inspiration is again, testament to how he's constantly innovating. He's not just looking at the Tasik Malaya embroidery, not just looking at Lyric, but then now he's thinking about, okay, what else is there? Um, what's going on in Papua? What kind of clothing do they wear? So it's not only about a craft or about a material, but also about um, a way of dressing. And he also drew inspiration from the temple reliefs and Balinese wood carvings that were poured into the embroidery and embroidered ornaments. And you can see here, I've also put in an image of the Balinese thatched roof because he also drew inspiration for that, for the hats. Um, and one of them you see here on the image. So this, I think, relates to what Monty Regan wrote in 2007 about cultural uniqueness and aesthetic cosmopolitanism. 
This is the condition in which the representation and performance of ethno-national cultural uniqueness are largely based on art forms that are created by contemporary technologies of expression. And these expressive forms include stylistic elements normally drawn from sources exterior to indigenous traditions. The produ uh, production of ethno-national cultural uniqueness is in fact a practice of choosing, selecting, and extracting elements from a plethora of expressive components available at a global level, including the producer's own traditions. And I think from what I shared already, um, you can see how Toton does this in a sophisticated manner. You know, he makes the selection carefully, he extracts the elements, it never overpowers, there isn't too much going on, and he puts them in this collage that really works very well for his brand. So what he says about it is that the muse of his design will always be Indonesia, but it doesn't always have to scream Indonesia. And I think that is one of the key reasons why Toton the Label does so well, because the starting point is something that is close to his heart, but he doesn't then become consumed by the idea. Rather, um, because he is someone who is very open to influences, he's very inspired by many things, he's open-minded, um, he looks at you know, everything um, that he comes across, you know, so it could be shapes, colors, music, words, anything, and he's constantly creating. So he draws, um, he tries to translate that into his designs. And I mean, I'm not talking about all the images that are appearing on my screen, but I think you can see from, you know, the range of ideas, from, you know, the details that there is a lot of thought that's put into what he puts together and what he does in his own way. So I think one of the things that we can think about when we say you know, they, that designers don't always look at fashion itself or that they choose select and extract elements that could be um, external to their own traditions, we can again look at how for the Spring Summer 2019 collection, he was also inspired by the actress Susanna in the film Sundar Bolong. Um, Sundar Bolong is a ghost that is um, usually a pregnant woman who, well, who gets pregnant outside of marriage and then dies during childbirth. And I think there is this version of the Sundar Bolong in all cultures. Um, as Barbara Creed tells us, you know, where a woman is represented as monstrous, um, it is almost always in relation to her mothering and reproductive functions. These faces are the archaic mother, the monstrous womb, the witch, the vampire, the possessed woman. And the phrase monstrous feminine emphasizes the importance of gender in the construction of a monstrosity. So uh, in my opinion, Toton is precisely looking at the monstrous feminine or what is considered usually as the monstrous feminine and trying to subvert notions about that. So he says in his own words that um, the references for the collection were mystical elements of women's portrayal in Indonesian or generally Asian folklore and horror stories that they are often depicted as malicious villains with supernatural abilities and are dangerous creatures to be afraid of and so they are bound to be tamed. And I think through his collection he's trying to tell us that that shouldn't be the case, that there is, um, uh, you know, there is another layer to them, there's another way to look at them and we're gonna look at how that manifested in the design in a little bit. So I want you to keep that notion in mind for a while, um, but I wanna talk first about the raffia or raffia-like texture um, that you see in the images from the collection, because that has to do with how he translated Susanna and Sunda Bolong into his collection. So first of all, the raffia has appeared before in the previous collection, as you can see here in the fall 2017 collection, where in this image, it is um, used to adorn or to um, become the belt um, that is around the waist of the model. And he wanted to use the raffia, first of all, because it can be found throughout Indonesia's diverse culture, and it has different functions and meanings as well. So when he used it first in the fall 2017 collection, it was an exploration of masculine dressing and how uh, traditional Indonesian warriors, such as in Papua and Nias, dressed. So the raffia fringe is rather short, neatly thatched, 
and it is to infuse powerful and authoritative elements through the use of the raffia, just like how the warriors use these elements in their clothes. But then in the 2019 collection, it was quite the opposite, where the raffia was used to symbolize domesticity. Um, so as you've seen earlier, the Balinese thatch roof is a reference for the hat, and it was meant to symbolize this idea of being domestic. Um, at the same time, now we come back to the idea of the Sundal Bolong, it looks like the hanging roots of a banyan tree because usually um, the Sundal Bolong or the Pontiana, if you will, um, which is again the ghost in Southeast Asian folklore, they hang out at the banyan tree. Um, or it could also relate to the women's long hair as depicted in horror stories. So the raffia in this collection is longer and wilder, and it was all brushed with a wire brush to get a softer texture. So I find this incredibly fascinating because it has such deep meanings. It is not um, that obvious a reference to the Sundal Bolong, which is a source of inspiration. And there was this design element, you know, that it was brushed with a wire brush to achieve that softer texture to help Toton tell the story of this collection. So it is in my mind absolutely brilliant. And this is something that um, the industry notices as well. So a fashion critic, um, Julius Kansen, wrote in Manual that if the Rafa skirt resembling thatch roof seemed stiff and chunky in the fall 2017 collection, it was softer, almost weightless in the 2019 collection. So um, this seemed like, you know, it was not just about the storytelling, but an improvement on um, the use of the raffia in the collection for its wearability, for its beauty. Um, and then if that is still not enough for a really sophisticated collection, um, there are also, there's also the use of denim. And you can see here that the denim fabrics are ripped apart, they're deconstructed, and then they are reconstructed to create um, the hats, the jackets, even the pens. And you can see all three iterations here. And so on a very textual level, um, Kenson writes about how you know, it's impressive that Toton swiftly builds up the audience's desire to feel the clothes. But even more mind boggling to me is that Toton has also created something that is to do with sustainability. He is aware, he is invested in making sure that um, something is done with the waste fabric you know, that comes out, especially from Indonesian factories. So in this other article from T Singapore, um, Lynette Key wrote about how his denim pieces are made out of waste fabric, which is an initiative he started in 2017 because he is mindful of um, the idea of sustainability for his brand. And I believe that in the past year, he has also been using other waste fabric, not just denim, to make his clothes because he doesn't want to create um, additional waste from making his collections. So now we come to the next section where I talk about how he dresses women. And so we are already aware that he is very much um, considering Indonesia in the way he designs. But because he's a women's wear designer, how does he view the woman who he designs for? So he thinks that Toton the label is for the modern woman, of course, um, and someone who appreciates different kinds of beauty and luxury and loves and appreciates arts and culture. So this is, I think, um, pretty much what he is like as well as a designer. And so it is, I think, for women who appreciate his process. And again, he talks about how they would like to feel different and special, but not necessarily be the center of attention, which again brings to mind how when he designs based on inspirations from Indonesia, it is also not about screaming Indonesia. So it's all rather subtle and all rather sophisticated. And if we think that he's only stopped in Indonesia, he is not. So he um, has also stopped in Singapore, New York, Tokyo, Riyadh, Jeddah, Dubai, and uh, also an online retailer based in Jakarta that ships worldwide. And his typical followers are women in their 20s or early 30s, living in big cities with good education, financial background, and affinity to arts and cultures. But at the same time, as he says this, um, he's also aware that whatever he produces 
um, he's not going to be thinking um, dictatorially about, you know, who should be wearing it. He thinks that everyone has the right to look the way they look, and he wants the pieces that he produces to become part of their story. Um, and he definitely appreciates, um, or that he definitely thinks that if the wearer can appreciate where the thought um, of that construct or of that piece comes from, then, you know, that's the kind of consumer that he believes would really enjoy wearing Toto on the label. So I have here two images. Um, one is of Olivia Lazwardi, who is an influencer from Indonesia, and the other is Nicole Warren, previously known as Gary Papagall. And I put them side by side because I wanted to illustrate that it is not only the Indonesian woman who wears Toton. Um, and yeah, because there is both an Indonesian woman here and there's an Australian woman as well. And this is um, a rather artificial um, slide into my next idea, which is from Jennifer Craig, who is from Australia. Um, and she writes about how Australian fashion dress um, may not necessarily be distinctively Australian. And I really like this quote because um, as someone who looks at Singapore fashion and more generally Southeast Asian fashion, I think there is always this misconception that fashion is something that doesn't belong to places that are not in the central West. That sounds really strange, but you know, we are always thinking about how um, the Western dress system or the Western fashion system is at the center and everything else is at the peripheries. So I really like this quote because Craig talks about how the idea of fashion as being a characteristic of Australian culture is often considered something that is just not, not thought, you know, that is not, uh, not to be. Um, because fashion is seen as belonging to cosmopolitan sites elsewhere, while Australia is a far-flung site that's cut off from the trappings of civilization. And I think this relates very well to Southeast Asia as well, including Indonesia, of course, as you can see in this image here. So Australia is even further from the West than um, Southeast Asia. But I think we can think of them together as traditionally being part of the margins, being part of the periphery. Um, at the same time, I think that Southeast Asian designers have been slowly encroaching upon um, the usual spaces where Western fashion is shown, is presented, is enjoyed. So Toton himself says this. He talks about how the brand was initially started with a focus already on the international market. And it's not really about how he established himself domestically first before going overseas, but rather that he thought translating Indonesian heritage for modern women would bode well for international buyers and clientele. And the hope was really that customers in Indonesia would eventually warm up to this idea. So this takes a moment to understand. I think, I mean, when I was reading this, I thought, oh, okay. What Toton is saying is that the domestic market may be even harder to conquer as an Indonesian designer than the international market because the local consumers are very savvy consumers who buy pretty much from international brands um, most of the time. Um, and so he's saying that if Toton became an internationally recognized brand, then customers in Indonesia who are accustomed to buying internationally would also feel that Toton the label was worth buying, was worth wearing. So it's an extremely interesting idea and something that I have heard before from other designers based in Southeast Asia as well. Um, so it is really something to think about as we consider the idea of the global fashion system and how even in the peripheries, um, the formula for success may not be to conquer the local market first, but to go international and then get to the domestic market. So on that front, Toton has actively marketed his collections in international trade shows and tried to appeal to a variety of stockies abroad. Um, and he started by first participating incidentally at Blueprint Trade Show in Singapore in 2012, when he first launched his collection, when he first launched his label. And then from the third season, he went to Paris for the Trace showroom, which was 
uh, always held in the middle of Paris Fashion Week. So another um, way that designers can get the word out on their designs, on their label, is also to take part in competitions. And I think when Toton won the Woolmark Asia Award in 2016, um, that's when many people in the industry and within the domestic market also set up and paid attention to what he was doing. Um, so for this particular award, he combined Indonesian heritage, which he always does, with quality craftsmanship made with merino wool using traditional artisanal techniques by craftsmen from Garut, West Java. And I think this is really fascinating because um, the idea of wool in the climate in Southeast Asia seems rather strange because we are um, near the equator, so it is summer all year long. But he was able to translate um, Indonesian heritage based on these artisanal techniques, something that he, he had already been working with to create something that appealed internationally and won him this award that then put him on the international stage, gave him a spotlight and really um, increase the, the attention that was shown to his label. And he has had other activations overseas as well. So one of them uh, was in 2016 with the British Council. So you can see here in this image that he is um, photographed together with the Indonesian president Jokowi. And the write up there is from the British Council website where basically these were alumni of the Indonesia Fashion Forward program. So they were all Indonesian designers and they were brought um, to London to show at Fenwick's a department store there to show what was coming out of Indonesia and to appeal to the London audience. And on the right, you can also see another image where Toton is again put together with other Indonesian designers like Friedrich Herman, Major Minor, The Label, and Peggy Hartando. And the reason I'm showing these two examples is that I think part of the reason why Toton is successful is that he collaborates with his fellow designers from Indonesia so that, I mean, there's unity in numbers, right? And um, to participate in these overseas activations as a group really means increased attention on all of them as a whole. So that brings me to the final section where I talk about multi-channel communication and collaboration. So Toton is not just a designer. Um, he is also um, the owner of Ara, which is a boutique that's in Jakarta. So he founded Ara together with two other designers, Friedrich Herman and Peggy Hartanto. And the idea was that there will be a place where Indonesia's creative, especially in fashion, um, can have space to showcase, can have a space to showcase and collaborate. And the criteria for brands to be included were that or are that they have an authentic voice and consistency in their work in their collections. And of course they have to be from Indonesia as well. And they have a partner, Joe Elaine, um, who is the former fashion editor of Daily Magazine, as well as someone who worked before at the multi-label online uh, boutique called bobobobo.com. And she has been um, instrumental in the ARA curation process. So not only does he design and you know, um, participate in these overseas activations, he also has a space he created with fellow designers to showcase other Indonesian designers' works. Um, so again, we come back to the idea of collaboration, of encouraging each other, of um, coming up together, of supporting each other, of mentoring, of um, collaborating, which I think is really key to the success of not only Toton, uh, the label, but also other Indonesian labels as well. And Toton, I think, is tireless in you know, working together with others and to making sure that he is always articulating what the brand is about, what the brand is doing. So we see here two examples, um, a recent collaboration between Kojo and Toton, a limited collection that's available at ARA. And on the right, we see that Toton um, spoke with Society A, which is a Singapore-based multi-label boutique. And in this particular talk on IG Life, he's talking about you know, his label, his story. And I think something else that 
is fascinating is that there are others who don't necessarily collaborate in an official capacity with Toton, but responds uh, to Toton's work. So I'm going to show you two examples of fashion illustrations from admirers of Toton's work. So this is from Inta Lubis. Um, I took it from Instagram and you can see here that uh, this particular illustrator has drawn very beautifully Toton's work um, to pay respect, to pay homage to what he has created. Okay, so it says here, inspired by Susanna um, Lakli Bali, uh, witchcraft and other Indonesian horror things, Toton could deliver us a beautiful yet mysterious collection in the latest JFW or Jakarta Fashion Week official. I don't know, but I'm mesmerized to see how the raw cutting denim, flower, dragon, and broader organdy tassels, abnormal bucket hat, sheer dresses can be harmonic all together. Terry face. Great job, Mr. Toton. And you know, it's just so amazing to see how his creativity, um, his work inspires others to create beautiful work as well. And then there is just this conversation, this dialogue that goes on, that's organic, um, that really, I think, builds up the industry. Another example from another admirer, um, Jerry Anwar, again, um, a different set of illustrations of his work. And of course, Toton himself, like I said, is tireless um, in putting out creative projects. And this is one I actually love. Um, this was a collaboration with Daily Magazine, which is based in Indonesia. And it was done together with three contemporary artists from Indonesia, Agan Haraha, Anki Perbandono, and Iwan Effendi. And to make it even more intertextual, um, it was inspired by a painting from modern Indonesian artist Hendra Gunawan um, called Preparation of the Gorilla and it was on the cover of the magazine. And this is what Toton says about that, you know, that the way we communicate is changing with the emphasis on digital media. We need more than ever to be visually creative to tell our story. And this is a huge um, part of how he is successful, you know, not just because the clothes themselves are so sophisticatedly created based on um, a wide range of inspirations, that are cleverly put together, but also that he is so good at storytelling and making sure that we understand what he's doing um, and in allowing us, I think, to you know, be inspired by his inspirations. So he talks about how in guest editing daily magazine, um, in both the print and online versions, he is telling um, a story about the brand and of course, he's doing um, multiple things at once. He's also preparing the website, the Toton the Label website to be more interactive with customers direct access to the collection. So it's not only about the designing, it's not only about the inspiration, it's also about the customer's experience, you know, that he is thinking about, that he's constantly improving. And with Ara as well, with his shop, there will also be a lot of changes. Um, and he is very aware that the pandemic has forced fashion to go back to its primary function to offer a solution or a dream and escape. So he is already thinking about how this can enable um, us to dream and to hope for a better future. But lest we go away from this presentation thinking that uh, Toton is all about the storytelling and inspiration, um, I wanted to end with this quote, you know, that he is constantly being um, led to think about one or the other and to balance artistic expression with commerciality of a collection. So sometimes one of it has to give a little to allow the other to shine, but you know the two have to go hand in hand. So he says, sometimes to express an idea, we need to go to a certain length of creative presentation. But on the other hand, as a small brand, the business, the commercial aspects are always considerations so that the total the label can thrive and he can keep on creating. So I think with that, uh, we can see how um, Toton Janois, as the designer behind Toton the label, um, has been incredible in how he draws inspiration from a wide range of sources, 
um, that in doing so, he has created a brand that really speaks to his consumers, that really speak to um, everyone interested in fashion, that he has also inspired others' creativity. Um, and with that, I end the presentation. And I wanted to also say thank you so much to Toton for answering the questions I had about his work. I really appreciate it. And these are the references, if you're interested. Um, I have looked at um, quite a number of interviews, reviews, and news articles as well. Um, many of them from Indonesia, in Bahasa Indonesia. And for that, I need to thank Google Translate so that I can understand what they're saying and also understand how the Indonesian audience um, is receptive to and celebrating Toton's work as well. And if you're interested to find out more about Toton the label, these are um, the sites and these are the social media handles as well. And for me, um, I can be found at In The Vitrine on Instagram. This is a podcast I run with my colleague um, at LaSalle College of the Arts where I teach as well. Um, her name is Daniela Monasteros Tan and we do a podcast called In The Vitrine and we upload images relating to that at In The Vitrine. And if you want to contact me, my email address is there. Thank you so much for listening and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you so much, Nadia. That was just so fascinating. And it's really great that you um, gave a book list and references of how to find out more about Toton. Um, I'm going to be slightly cheeky and ask or make a comment, a first comment, but I can see that there are some good questions in the chat and please everyone who's attending, put your questions in the chat because that's the only way we can see them. Um, so something, I mean, his work is so fascinating. There were so many ideas that come to mind, but something that I noticed with many of the, the images that you showed, is it's almost as though the Indonesian references frame each garment and frame the body because they're often kind of over the shoulders and round or the hats that come down or the shoes. And I think that's a really sort of beautiful way because as you said, it, it makes us view the clothes through the influences, but in a very kind of subtle way that kind of creeps up on you. So yeah, sorry, that was a comment more than a question, but. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, um, he, he's just so good with proportions as well, I think. You know, he has, uh, for example, in one of the images I showed, um, there is this idea of deconstruction as well, where mm -hmm. there is a, a shirt, but then it kind of gets cut off almost um, at the waist and is left to hang. But then that kind of then emphasizes how, you know, the florals um, are really organic on his garments because then they trail um, yeah. on the on the top as well. So I, I really appreciate that. I mean, I'm a long time lover of Toton label. As you can see, I have a piece from one of his first collections and I'm so happy I get to wear it today and talk about his work. It's, it's, it's wonderful. I'm going to hand you over to Olivia now. Thank you so, so much. And yes, please keep sending us your um, questions in the chat. Thank you. Hello everyone and thank you very much um, to Nadia, what a wonderful presentation. Um, we yeah. now have about um, 50 minutes for questions, so I'm going to go through the chat. If you do have any questions, pop them in there um, and hopefully um, they will be answered in that way. So um, I am just going to kick off um, with a question from Margaret who is interested in the shoes. Are the shoes also thatched, Nadia? Um, it seems so. And, uh, you know, I think Toton is really great at just like doing the top to bottom look. Like he's not just looking at the clothes, but also looking at how that can translate into accessories. Um, so not just like the earrings, the hats that we see, but also glimpses of the shoes. I realized I, I offered them in some of the images. So yes, definitely. Okay, fascinating. Um, next question is, what is your favorite piece of clothing from Toton um, and why do you like it? Do you think the way you feel about his clothes um, matches the feeling that the designer has or aims to inspire in his consumers? Mm. Um, it's going to be really tough to pick a favorite. I, I think that, you know, every collection, I'm just so excited to see what he comes up with. Um, and what I like about his work is that he not only uh, continues with what he has done before, 
so that you know it is recognizably Toton or signature Toton. But that then he kind of cleverly creates something new. He injects something new that makes you feel, oh gosh, you know, there is something I can look forward to. Um, there's something familiar, but there's also something exciting. And I think that's what we always look for when we buy from a fashion brand, that we can recognize it. It feels like something we've known before. It feels like a friend. Uh, it feels like there is payoff for being a loyal customer, but that I am constantly surprised as well. So I think that's what he does very well. And um, with regard to my feelings about his collections, I think because I'm always thinking beyond what is shown and you know how um, it looks on my body and how I wear it, but more about like the thought processes behind it, um, I, I find myself just appreciating his work even more. And so that helps me to um, feel very invested as a customer. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for the lay person as well, because he is so good at expressing his thoughts and he is um, very open to giving interviews. And um, so then I think everyone is aware of like what goes into the making of the collection. And I think people appreciate um, the amount of thought that goes into each and every one. Mm -hmm. So kind of following on from that then, we have a question um, regarding European or Eurocentric consumers. Um, how do you feel, for example, that the market in New York um, views um, the heritage and craft, the Indonesian heritage and craft that Toton explores? Um, I think on that front, uh, what Toton does well is definitely that even though he takes from Indonesian heritage and culture, that it's still something that can be appreciated for its intrinsic aesthetic value. So even if one is not familiar with, um, you know, the traditions in Indonesia, I think it's an it's like a gateway or an entry into what it can offer. Um, and I think for him, it's not so much about, you know, like he said, not about screening Indonesia, but the fact that it is something that can be contemporary, that can be seen to be contemporary. Um, that's really fascinating. So um, I think that's why he is stopped, um, not just in Indonesia, but elsewhere in the world, because the buyers are recognizing, you know, that it is just, you know, um, a beautiful work of fashion, you know, that it doesn't need to be for someone who already knows about Indonesian fashion or about Indonesian um, artisanal techniques, for example. Mm -hmm. um, now we have a question, um, saying that Indonesia has one of the largest uh, Muslim populations in the world. Um, and has this had any influence in the way that Totan um, sort of alters his design? Is he aware of this? Um, or is it something that's um, sort of irrelevant to him? This is a fascinating question because I think it is inevitable that in any uh, presentation or any book about Indonesia, uh, about Indonesian fashion, that this question will come up. Um, I don't make um, specific mention about it in the presentation, but if you look back at the images, um, they are modest in that, you know, they do not show um, a lot of skin and, you know, they are rather conservative in how they um, drape on the body and how they do not cling or they don't, um, they are not body conscious in any way, um, but rather it is just so beautifully embroidered that you don't even think about that, you know, that it's not even something that immediately comes to mind because you're just so taken with how it is a beautiful piece of work time and time again. Now, obviously, um, you have discussed throughout your presentation, the storytelling that occurs in each collection as a whole, um, but you are wearing a singular piece of tote on today. So how far do you think the themes and inspirations, um, these sort of stories translate into the ind individual pieces as standalone items? Um, I think for me, I mean, with this piece that I'm wearing, I, I mean, first of all, I bought it not because like I want to support him just because of that or um, that I'm invested in the idea of like Indonesian traditions being made contemporary in fashion, but I just like it because it's beautiful um, and it fits very well too, just to say, <laughs> just to put it out there. But um, I also think that what Toton is saying is, you know, it's, I think it's really um, not the point to like wear hip to toe Toton, for instance, or to have something that's um, totally just, um, something that you, you put together as he would on the runway, 
because if we take from the way he designs, he does it in a hybridized way, right? Where he looks at all the different ways that different ideas can be put together. So I think I have his approval, I hope, that you know I'm also doing the same with his collection, you know, that I'm looking at what he's created and I'm pairing it with something else that belongs in my wardrobe that might be some, from someone else who's designing in Southeast Asia, or that might be um, from an international label, because you know, um, just as he designs, with um, this idea of aesthetic cosmopolitanism, I believe that I dress, as most women do, with that in mind as well, that we exercise creativity, um, that we can pick and choose, you know, we can choose, select, uh, extract um, elements and tell our own stories. Mm -hmm. Now, you've sort of touched on this already, but obviously there will be a difference um, just because of climate in the way that a woman in New York, for example, might wear a piece of Totem's work to a, a woman in Indonesia. Um, but we have a question sort of asking, is there a typical way um, to wear or accessorize Totem's pieces? Are they more formal, informal, more spring, summer, more autumn, winter? Um, are there any trends? That is a great question. Um, I think that Toton's pieces are just so precious looking um, that, you know, I think women who buy them will keep them or try to wear them for special occasions. Um, but I think also that he has a wide range. So he does the really exuberant, um, sometimes over the top sort of looks. And then there are the ones that are more pat down. So what I'm wearing today, for example, I think it's very easy to style because it's just all white. Um, so then with this, I can afford to be a bit more creative with it. And I don't feel like it's strange for me to wear it on a casual day as well, which I have also done. And um, with regard to the idea of weather, um, I think for his works, I mean, this is a sleeveless top, so that helps already. But you can see that um, even though it's sleeveless, there's the idea that it's still quite conservative because you, know, you can button it all the way up to the top, for example. Um, and then you pair it with something that is um, area, I guess, you know, at the bottom so that um, it, it is good for the weather. But I think his pieces are also great for layering. So for example, we saw with Olivia Lazwardi, um, she did that very well with the layering for um, the weather in New York at the time. Mm -hmm. um, now, we also have a question saying, as much as Toton is a very globally minded um, designer, has he contributed to um, the indigenous or traditional community um, in any way sort of in terms of activism or giving back um, the communities from which he sort of sought his inspiration? Mm. Well, I think that the way he does it is, I mean, he is working directly with the artisans. Um, so I think that in itself is, you know, a way of the best way of giving back because you are giving people who have these skills, um, whose skills are their livelihood, the chance to make it their livelihood, right? And the chance for them to, you know, see their work appreciated by a new audience, by an audience that they wouldn't have um, contact with or links to without um, this medium, you know, to filter and to um, recontextualize, you know, what they're doing in the contemporary language. So on that front, I think, you know, Toton is someone who is very aware of um, not only doing things that are good for his label in a business sense, but also in, um, supporting and helping others um, to develop their craft, to you know, um, make a living together with, with his work. Yeah. So I think on that front, that's what he does. Um, and just out of curiosity, what is the price range of his creations? Are they affordable? Are they, um, obviously there's a huge amount of design um, and craft that goes into them. And does that make them more sort of couture pieces? Um, I don't think they're couture pieces, so um, I find them still quite acceptable in the price range. I would say um, between two well, Singapore dollars, it was between about 200 to um, 600, 700. I think that's what it is. Um, but he also has sales, you know, where um, you can buy them at a discounted price point. Um, so for context, I think 200 Sing dollars is about like um, divided by 2.5, you get it for um, the for British pounds. So I think it's still really affordable. I would say it's kind of like high street labels, um, maybe sometimes a little bit more for the more complicated pieces. So certainly not forbidding, you know, for um, like you said, the working woman. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and where do you think Totem sits alongside other Indonesian designers? Um, that's a good question. And I think, you know, I, I overpromised a little when I did the excerpt for this topic because I said I was going to talk about all Southeast Asian fashion designers. Um, I think for Toton, the way he works um, is very similar to a lot of Southeast Asian designers in that they also look at um, inspiration from Indonesia. So, for example, with Peggy Hatanto, whom he runs Ara with, um, she definitely caters to the modern working woman just like Toton does. And then you have, for example, like Felicia Budi, who in the same season, the Spring Summer 2019 collection, um, she also looked at materials, um, at cloths from Indonesian traditions. And I think if we widen the scope to talk about Southeast Asian designers, um, another designer whom I think has a very similar process to Toton would be Priscilla Shanmugam with Ang Shanmugam, which is based in Singapore. She also looks at um, traditions in Southeast Asia and combines them with global elements to create really beautiful, updated pieces for um, yeah, the modern working woman again. Mm -hmm. So these are just two examples, but I think you know they, they all have, of course, their unique brand identities, their unique selling points. Um, but I think in looking at their own backgrounds for inspiration, um, in looking at how they not only design clothes beautifully, but also are really savvy business people like you know they they tell the stories of the brands really well um i think on that front they they do yeah, they do sync up mm -hmm. now nadia we have a question um one of our viewers wants to know where your earrings are from um oh. also how oh. you decided to pair them with the top um obviously i'm noticing that there is some similarity between the movement of the earrings and Tejon's designs yeah. and was this a conscious decision you know, it is, and um, I was actually trying to figure out which label the earrings are from, but I did buy them from Indonesia. So I bought them from this uh, multi-label boutique called Goods Depth, uh, so like Goods Department, Goods Depth, and I love Goods Depth, and it is actually where I have discovered um, a lot of Indonesian designers. It's a shop that's in Jakarta. They also run this um market called Bright Spot that looks at like local in the, like local fashion designers as well. Um, so I thought this was a great pairing because it was florals too and it's also from Jakarta but I, I can't for the life of me remember the name of the label and it's not on the box that it came in as well. Um, so I will endeavor to find out and if I do I think I could share it. <laughs> Um, just out of curiosity, um, how many times have you worn um, the garment and have you worn it in sort of different contexts or is it a very specific look for you? I have worn it um, in many different contexts. I mean, I got this, I think, in 2012 or 20, 2013. So it's been many years. Um, I remember when I first got it that, you know, it was very special and I only wore it for like events or when I thought I needed to impress. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I stopped wearing it for a while when I, I think when I became pregnant, I just put it aside because I thought like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother with this. And then um, I took it out again to wear, um, you know, sometimes in your wardrobe, you just kind of like revisit pieces you like. And so when I became, became interested in talking about Toton, I've talked about Toton in another presentation for the Association of Dress, uh, of Dress Historians in 2017. So you can see in some of my slides that I talked about how the interview was done in 2017. Um, so when I did that, I again thought like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll take that piece out and I'll wear it. Um, but for that presentation, I talked about Southeast Asian design um, in general, which also included someone like Priscilla Shamagam. So I think I wore an Ong Shamagam um, dress for that presentation. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to take one last question um, in the last five minutes. Does Toten want to expand his range of sustainable resources? Is sort of sustainability something that he is actively working to improve? Definitely. So um, I think in the presentation, I, I talked briefly about how I think he's been doing that not only with denim, um, but also with other scraps of materials that come out from Indonesian garment manufacturing factories. Uh, because, I mean, there are, there's a lot of production going on in Indonesia, um, certainly for the region. And so he is thinking about how he can use these materials for his collections because he thinks it's really important um, to 
not add to the waste um, that the fashion industry is famous for producing. So yes, definitely. And, and I know that we can look forward to even more brilliant creations um, for Toton. Well, Nadia, thank you so much um, for your incredible presentation. I'm, I know that I will be going to look at all of his previous collections. And I can see from the questions in the chat that people are just so um, impressed and moved by his work. Um, so thank you very much um, from jo for joining us today. Um, and thank you for everyone um, for tuning in in general. Now, um, if you are interested in joining us again in the future, um, Rebecca is holding an Instagram live um, with the fashion journalist Dal Choda um, next Friday. Um, details of that can be found on the research forum um, in the same in the same way. And we would love to see uh, many more of you. It will be held on Rebecca's Instagram, so documenting fashion. If you don't follow that, um, please do head over there. And once again, Nadia, thank you so much. Um, it's been lovely to have you with us this afternoon. Thank you very much for having me. And everyone, please go look at Toton's work. I hope I have made some fans out of you yet. So thank you and good night from Singapore. Bye.